Welcome back. Day three. Yes. All right. I told you things would change, right? We got the desk yesterday. What did we get today? Chair. If we didn't have both our chairs crammed in here, I would show you that they can actually lay all the way back because they're legit gamer chairs. Um, but yeah, what else? What did you do today besides put together your new chair? There we go. Learned about textures and how to put them on stuff. Nice. What is the texture? Tell Rachel, our new camera person. Texture. I mean, like, it's like you put, so say the platform is just like a blank, blank gray thing. I can make it look like grass. Nice. Yes. What's the difference between a texture and a material? You ever hear the word material? Material. Uh, yes. I, I, I looked at it. I remember that. That's all yeah. I, I forget the difference. I think material might be more like uh, how the light affects it. Yeah, I had a right. Brick. Oh yeah, I had a brick and it kept shining with the sun in different places. So like if you had a reflective material, yes. the sun or light source would cause like rays of light to bounce off of it. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, very awesome. You also one of your tutorials had you build a little marble rolling game. Yeah. Right? No. Um so we're gonna check that out here in a second. But uh, the other thing you did today is you read a couple chapters in that, that book, right? Okay, we'll recap what you learned in that. But first, let's check out your, your first uh, demo. We can really show off. Um, okay, in Unity, here we go. So right now, we're again just using a webcam, but we're gonna have a better setup at some point where we actually do screen captures. Um, but yeah, just showing off just kind of how this works. It's a single scene. Let's play here. All right. See that lava ball? You see a lava ball? So you, you change the texture on that ball. Yeah. And then what about this path? How'd you build That's that? gravel. Nice. How'd you put this path together? Uh, I downloaded some assets from the store. Texture packs. Okay, but like the um, the ramp. What's that built out of? Uh, laid out platforms and cubes like flat nice so you laid them out in 3d space what about the physics do you know how it, the ball knows to bounce and not yeah, fall through it i put a uh i made it like so it was solid and then i put some like this bouncy i forgot what it was but i added it to the i added like the what is it called oh man i forget what it was but i added some sort of I don't know what it was called, but it made the ball bouncy. Physics? Physics. Oh my lord, yes, physics. Yes. Nice. So if I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at this, you know, we'll, we'll dive more into this when we actually work on a game together. But I'm just looking at your. Let's see, where's the ball? Run. I grab the ball. It's called the runner. Yes. Another airplane flying by. It's like we. The right at LAX or something. Um, okay, so this runner object's the ball. Now I'm looking at it, it's got a few components on it, right? So by default, it's got a, it's a transform, which just shows its positioning and rotation and scale. It's pretty standard, right? But it's got a sphere mesh, right? That's what the model's made out of. A mesh renderer, which has on it materials, and you put the lava pattern texture on it and lighting you have it casting shadows turned on and receives shadows yeah. it's also got blend probes so that just has to deal with how the lighting works um, additional settings per object motion so it's got motion vectors it's probably blurring of the lighting you don't know too much about that and it's got um so it has a collider a sphere collider and a rigid body so the collider that's the thing that you put around the model to uh, look for collisions. So if the ball hits the ramp, it's hitting, it's actually the collider that's hitting, right? Yes. And then you have a bouncy ball material on it. I wonder if that makes, yeah, it was, affects the collision. Uh, I wonder how that affects the, the collision reaction or whatever. Also has a rigid body, so that's where the physics come in. So every you know, in physics, every object has a mass, 
there's a drag here, which is like if it's windy, you know, it's going to slow down its acceleration. So that's what drag simulates. Same thing with angular drag, different type of uh, uh, deceleration. You have gravity on, so that's why it drops as soon as the game starts. You say it's not uh, is not kinematic. Um, I forget exactly what that means. To look that one up, but uh, yeah, it has to do with motion. Interpolate none. Uh, collision detection is discrete. It's also continuous or continuous dynamic or continuous speculative. It's very technical. I'm not going to get into that stuff. Constraints. You don't have any constraints there. But yeah, so that's that's how the the physics work. The last thing on here is an animator, which says it emits particles, but I don't think that's actually. That's got to do it. Okay. Yeah. And then lastly, there's a shader, uh, which again has to do with material and um, how it illuminates the ball or whatever. But cool. So that, that's how it works. And then obviously the platforms, the cubes themselves, they have a box collider instead of a sphere collider on them. But that's those two hit each other, and um, yeah, that's how the physics work. Gravity, pretty sweet. So the other thing you did is you read this quick chapter three, two, two, two which is just learning to drive. It's like two pages. What did this talk about? Uh, to what I got from it was to stay aware, and there's a lot of adapting and changing, and to and it said. Driving is not only about getting in a car and getting in the right direction, but it's about constantly paying attention, making a little correction this way and that way. Adapting and changing as you go. Cool. I love that. Think about like how Tesla's AI, AI works in their cars. It doesn't it doesn't have a hard coded path, like it knows how to get from uh, LA to Austin. It doesn't do that, right? It actually looks using its camera vision and sees that there's a stoplight and it goes when it's green and it reads signs. I mean, there's some GPS like uh, mapping and stuff, but it doesn't it doesn't like determine to go just because of the green light. Also, make sure there's nothing in its way. It's dynamic, right? Same thing when you're software engineering. Uh, chapter three is about values, principles, and practices. So, so just tell me in your own words what's the difference between those three things. Oh, okay. Well, values in. Okay, here we go. Right, hold on. This is uh, Extreme Programming Explained Embrace Change by Kent Beck. Okay, so there's a bridge thing, right? Ah, a bridge. And values is on one side, practices on, on the other side, and the bridge is the principles. You know what I'm saying? I okay, so your foundation is principles. Those are the things you believe in. And so even, so then you, you use your practices. So like, for example, I believe in iterating quickly. So I try, so one of my practice, I, 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 here's a better way to say it. One of my principles is that um, good code is written when you are constantly getting feedback, right? Mm -hmm. So one of my practices is to do a small piece of work and deploy it to the customer right away so I can get feedback. But there's some value in there too. That's the one that's a little fuzzy for me. How's a value different than a principle, do you know? Let's see what he says in here. Principle is a domain specific guideline for life. <laughs> okay, so domain specific. So like um, when I was talking about getting feedback and quality and stuff, I was talking about deploying code that's specific to software engineering, that domain, right? But um, if we were bridge builders, maybe it's a different domain. Maybe you're not going to be deploying code rapidly. You're going to have some other practice of uh, only mixing the concrete in the morning. I don't know, whatever. You're going to have some specific practice that your your job in, that uses, right, for a specific reason. And I wrote down for values. Values will be different from time to time, place to place, and team to team as development continues okay so principles can uh, don't change but values might is that what's going on design changes uh, inability to cope with change either two uh there are two levels at which the driving metaphor applies to xp customers drive the content of the system the whole team drives the, oh i'm reading the wrong thing again it's like sorry here it is uh This page starts with call this level of knowledge and understanding values. Values are the roots of the things we don't 
that we like and don't like in a situation. When a programmer says, I don't want to estimate my task, he generally isn't talking about technique. He already estimates, but he doesn't want to reveal um, what he thinks for fear of providing a fixed point of judgment that will be used against him later. Better triple that estimate. Refusing to communicate estimates reveals something much deeper about how he sees the social forces in development. Perhaps he doesn't want to be accountable because he has been blamed unfairly in the past. In this case, programmer values protection over communication. Values are the large scale criteria we use to judge what we see, think, and do. So make values explicit is important. Without values, practices quickly become rote. Activities performed for their own sake but lacking any purpose or direction. It says values are universal and practices are intensely situated. Okay, and so principles is supposed to bridge the gap between uh, values and practices. Principles are domain specific guidelines for life. So Paul's knowledge, so some guy named Paul used an example, as a gardener exceeds mine at the level of principles as well. I might know to plant marigolds next to strawberries, but Paul understands the principles of companion planting where adjacent plants make up for each other's weakness. Marigolds naturally repel some of the bugs that eat strawberries. Planting them together as a practice, companion planting is the principle. In this book, I present the values, principles, and practices next week. So kind of a weird example. I don't know. We'll still play around with that. I, this is just this one guy's way of defining something, you know, and it get, does get used in other places, but for the most part, it's good to start just thinking about th these kind of concepts more abstractly, but you know, I'm not going to quiz you on the, this particular thing, but uh, hopefully it opened your mind to other ways of thinking. All right, let's end it there. Any last thoughts for today? I, whoa, I just, okay. I'm slowly learning, but it feels like I'm doing a lot in a short amount of time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it, you, right now you probably have more information coming at you than you're going to retain, and that's fine. But that's kind of the point of this uh, immersion. You know, that's, this is a dojo. You're in here every day doing, uh, doing tasks that hopefully will become repetitive to a sense where you can just, it could be natural. You'll know what moves to take and you'll have you'll have like a background historic like things to lean on whereas if you don't do this you're going to constantly be i'm speaking from experience you know if you don't just dive in and do something every day you're going to be like i don't know where to get started i don't even know what that thing is what does it mean to be a programmer you know it's like just this abstract concept mm -hmm. but by doing a little bit every day you're gonna before you know it you're gonna be a programmer you're gonna be a software you're gonna be a game developer because you do it not because you went to school but because you're doing it every day the books you read the tutorials you do that's all just doing it all right i feel like i've learned more from just doing this than in my actual class <laughs> yeah you know sometimes and, and then boot camps help that way too right you can learn in uh six weeks or whatever uh what people go to school for four years for so yeah i'm glad you're getting that out of it that's perfect and you'll plenty more. This is only the first week. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And thank you, camera person. Yes. Later. <laughs>